Welcome back to NBA Storytellers, powered by FanDuel on CLNS Media. I'm Nick Gelso, and today we embark on a captivating journey through the illustrious career of one of basketball's greatest power forwards, Kevin McHale. From the iconic green and white of the Boston Celtics to his mesmerizing low post plays, McHale's story is one that defines the very essence of NBA greatness. Join us as we unravel the chapters of Kevin McHale's remarkable journey. CLNS History is powered by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Get ready to immerse yourself in the rich history of the game as we dive deep into the legacy of Kevin McHale, an NBA storyteller for the ages. So now let's get started. Kevin still got the hot hand. Born in the small town of Hibbing, Minnesota in 1957, McHale grew from humble beginnings into a player who would help to shape the legacy of one of the most storied franchises in NBA history. Before his NBA career, McHale honed his skills at the University of Minnesota, where his dominant play caught the eyes of NBA scouts. We really wanted McHale. The Gophers were um, under some sort of um, um, restrictions by the NCAA. They could not I think they played in the uh, March Madness, and so he was he was really selected based on what we saw. It was a it was a, it was a draft choice swap. There was no certainty to it. Obviously, it was third pick. So, Austin will have the third pick. Star of Minnesota, Kevin McHale. We had the number one pick in the 14th pick. We traded the number one pick to Golden State. It's been a super situation I'm going into. You know, Boston's got a great club, a great tradition. And I just want to say, it's like a dream come true, you know, going to Boston. And, and then we had the 14th pick, which I think went to Robert Parrish. I think. In fairness, Robert was a throw-in. And Red was always, um, made, did recognize the big guys take a while to come back, to, to, to reach potential. And that's what, but we were taking a chance. McHale's arrival in Boston heralded the beginning of a new era. Teaming up with Cedric Maxwell, Larry Bird, and Robert Parrish, McHale became a vital part of one of the greatest front lines in NBA history. From 1980 to 1985, this formidable foursome would etch its name in the annals of basketball lore. The Celtics' front line quickly proved to be a devastating force. Together, they led the Celtics to five NBA Finals appearances. I knew we'd be good. I didn't know, I didn't know if we'd be quite that good. Capturing the title in 81 and 84, during their premium years, they got better. Every year they came back. Every year they were better. They didn't rely and live off what they did the past season. Hey, the league is big, man. And as I said, I came in and clearly, after my first week of practice, I went, okay, Cedric Maxwell, better than I am. Robert Parrish, better than I am. Larry Bird, better than I am. I got to improve. But I took pieces of all your guys' games. We had Larry, which uh, was a great offensive force. He had the respect of the, of the officials, and plus he was able to create offense. Kevin and myself, we could all shoot the basketball. We was all great finishers. Larry, I was able to create a lot of offense uh, for Kevin and myself, but we got a lot of points. I like to go back and see how many layups and dunks I got. You know, Robert's just shooting over. I did more of a fadeaway. I just learned how to shoot over the top of people like Robert did. And then with Larry, it was just clever. You know what I mean? Larry Larry had all the clever stuff. He probably gave up more than anybody. He didn't demand it. He, he liked his shot. Oh, that was a heck of a play. Yeah, I think everybody, when you play on a really good team, everybody sacrifices for each other because but it's not a sacrifice. It's, it's just that if, if Robert had it going, which he did many nights, he, he just got the ball. But, you know, just playing against you guys, I tell people all the time, Max was so supportive. And, you know, when, man, when, you know, and not only with me, the great being with you guys, because you guys kept everything fun, competitive, 
But you know, there wasn't. I never, honestly, I never thought as a rookie that I was never overwhelmed at all. You guys were always, you guys were all better than I was. I was trying to figure out the hell I was doing, and you guys helped me so much. It was just amazing. I I tell people who our arch enemies were, and for you and I, it was Robert Parrish and Larry Bird. Because yep. every day in practice, it was me and you together, okay? <laughs> we got to go at these bitches today. And it was, it, it was like, I, I think back on, I'm like, man, that was unbelievable basketball. When you think about those Hall of Famers and basketball IQs and the way guys play. And once Maxwell was traded to the Clippers, Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, and Larry Bird would go on to win their third and final championship in 1986. By this time, they were dubbed the Big Three. McHale was known for his exceptional footwork and an array of low post moves, which became a nightmare for his opponents. His unique ability to score, rebound, and block shots earned him seven All-Star appearances and two Six Man of the Year awards. But McHale was way more than just an offensive force. He was a formidable defender, earning three all-defensive first-team nominations, his high basketball IQ and unyielding tenacity, and high threshold for pain made him one of the toughest players of his era. When discussing Kevin McHale, we must give special attention to his artistry in the low post. The NBA had never seen anything like it before and has struggled to find anything like it since. McHale's offensive repertoire was so varied and nuanced that his Celtics teammates, Larry Bird and Danny Ainge, referred to him as the black hole. McHale's signature move was the up and under, affectionately known as the McHale move. He would catch the ball with his back to the basket, give a slight shoulder fake, as if he was going to go up for a shot. He'd cause the defender to rise in response. Then McHale would pivot underneath the defender and smoothly finish at the rim. His six foot 10 frame coupled with his extraordinary long arms and nimble footwork made his move practically indefensible. The baseline hook shot was another weapon in McHale's low post arsenal. Whether it was a running hook across the lane or a stationary sky hook on the baseline, McHale could score over both shoulders, making him unpredictable and really hard to guard. McHale's drop step was lethal. He would catch the ball, feel where the defender was leaning, and then quickly spin towards the baseline for a layup or dunk. His speed and precision frustrated opponents and drew many fouls. Finally, it's important to mention Kevin McHale's exceptional footwork and ability to draw fouls. He was a master at fielding contact and using it against his opponents. His knack for getting defenders off balance allowed him to draw fouls consistently and earn trips to the free throw line. Kevin McHale, as a, was, as a rookie, established that he could play both forward and center. Unstoppable, unguardable, the best low forward. post man of the last 50 years. The best low post man, unequivocally, was a and, and, and technician in the, in the low post, was Kevin McHale. And he had more moves than Kareem. McHale had, he could post up on either box, turn to the right, turn to his left, had up and under moves, stutter step moves, had, had a variety of moves, and which Ruby Brown labeled once his bank vault of moves, quote unquote. Many fellow players and coaches have hailed Mikel as one, if not the best low post player in NBA history. His blend of skill and intuition, unyielding tenacity, made him a nightmare for defenders and a legend in the annals of NBA basketball. Well, actually, my personal nemesis is Kevin McHale because he was such, he's the best player I ever played against. Mac is unguardable. Mac had to be double team, triple team. You know, he taught me it's only right. You could not stop him. I've always said that you could not stop that guy. It was, and on the other end, I had to use every ounce of energy I did to score on him. That guy, when I looked, when I looked at, because we all look at the schedule, we're like, okay, I can have some fun that night. Uh-oh, uh-oh, better get a good night's sleep that night. I mean, we all say the same thing uh, about different guys, but Kevin McHale is the best player I played against because he was unstoppable offensively and he gave me nightmares on defense. Kevin was not only known for his immense talents, but also for his grit and determination. Perhaps no incident embodies this more than the 1987 playoffs. 
In the midst of that season, Mikhail had been battling a nagging foot injury. Unbeknownst to many, this was later revealed to be a fractured navicular bone in his right foot. You heard that right, folks. Mikhail was playing on a broken foot. I had made a decision to play. I'll worry about long-term later. Just, you know, we'll do all the tests and everything we have to do after the season to see what needs to be done. But right now, I don't want to deal with that. I just want to play basketball. Despite immense pain and risk of worsening the injury, Mikhail chose to suit up and play. He didn't merely participate. He still excelled, averaging nearly 21 points and nine rebounds with over two blocks per game in the playoffs. Mikhail's remarkable performance on a fractured foot helped propel the Celtics to the NBA Finals one last year in the 80s. Although they ultimately failed to arch rival Los Angeles Lakers, Mikhail's bravery, determination, and performance were nothing short of heroic. When asked about why he played on a broken foot, Mikhail simply stated that he was a competitor and that he couldn't let his team down. He famously said, you have the rest of your life to recover. Years later, it was revealed that this injury ultimately shortened Kevin McHale's career. However, his courage and self-sacrifice during that grueling playoff run only further solidified his legendary status in the hearts of Celtic fans and the broader NBA community. But amidst the physical torment, McHale's spirit remained undimmed. His resilience and unswerving dedication became symbolic of his career and of the legendary Celtics pride. He exemplified the heart of the Boston Celtics. From 1988 to 1992, a period of transition dawned upon the Celtics. Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish, the revered Big Three, had given the franchise its glory days. The late 1980s presented fresh challenges. Larry Bird, the cornerstone of the Celtics franchise, was compelled to the sidelines for the entire 1988-89 season due to an Achilles injury that required double foot surgery. With Bird out, the Celtics looked towards Kevin McHale to lead the team. Kevin rose to the challenge, embodying the spirit of Boston basketball. He became the team's offensive focal point, delivering sterling performances game after game. During the 88-89 season, McHale posted an impressive 22.5 points per game while grabbing almost nine rebounds. He led the Celtics in scoring, demonstrating his ability to take over the mantle of leadership in Bird's absence. Red Auerbach, the legendary architect of the Celtics, had built a team that could weather adversity. With Auerbach's foundation and McHale's unyielding performance, the Celtics continued to stay relevant. Notching a 500 record at the end of the season, the Celtics entered the playoffs as the eighth seed. Unfamiliar territory for a team that dominated the decade of the 80s. They faced off against the Detroit Pistons in the first round, who would go on to the NBA Finals. They swept the Celtics, ending McHale's short stint as the leader of the team. When Larry Bird returned to the parquet in 89-90, McHale selfishly returned to his role as the second option, exemplifying his team-first mentality. All the while, Robert Parrish was a constant presence. Alongside McHale and Bird, he maintained the Celtics' intimidating front court. Yet as the 90s commenced, McHale's persistent foot injury began to overshadow his performances. The 1990-91 season saw the return of his troublesome foot injury, signaling the twilight of his career was near. But even amidst physical torment, McHale's spirit remained undimmed. His resilience and unswerving dedication became symbolic of his career and of the legendary Celtics pride. McHale exemplified the heart of a true Boston Celtic. As the seasons moved forward, McHale's foot injury became a recurring theme. In 1991, the familiar pain resurfaced, casting a shadow over his performance. 
To mitigate the risk of further damage, Mikhail had to wear a cumbersome hard brace during games. The brace was a constant reminder of the physical toll he endured hampering his mobility on the court. Despite the discomfort and reduced agility, Mikhail continued to play, showcasing his resilience and commitment to his teammates. His statistical production may have dipped, but his impact on the court and in the locker room remained invaluable. One of the great, great power forwards that have ever played in the NBA. Kevin, he was a gamer. He was an ultimate gamer. You throw the ball to him, you might not get it back, because he, he can score on anybody. He won't throw it back to you, listen. It's called a black hole for, the, for a reason. He'd get out there, he'd have his wingspan. <laughs> uh, I might as well just take a jump shot. He's all the way down here. And Kevin McHale, they got, to, they got to the point where they were calling him a man of a thousand moves. Could not guard him one-on-one -on, -one on the box because he has such great footwork, and he did a great job of feeling the contact. And once he felt you, you were done. If the double team didn't come right away, forget about it. He had too much stuff on the box. Four man would have to be. Obviously, Kevin McHale, you know, the master of the inside, outside, you know, have the way you want a game, so. I, I never, I hated Kevin McHale because he's the best player I ever played against. Uh, he, he's, he's the one guy who was so much bigger than me with his long arms and his great moves. I had a difficult time guarding him. And then on the other end, he was so long. You know, it, you know, he was so long, I, it was tough for me to get my shot off if I had to face him up. Kevin, because two guys who were great in the low post, and obviously one was a mentor to the other, Mikhail being to Garnett. Right. On top of here are two guys that were sitting down there, you know, obviously Diesel is one of them as well, but we're talking about guys who the skill was magnificent over the power. Still, you know, I get. I think him and Elijah Juan. Uh, I don't know a third as far as footwork. I don't. Those two guys, as far as footwork, is as good as we'd ever see. I knew I could lock down Danny, so that wasn't a problem. And uh, you know, we were we were fearful of Bird and uh, Mikhail, but we were really scared of Mikhail because we knew Bird was going to be Bird, and you know, we felt that Dominique may outscore him, or you can match that. But Mikhail was the guy we just we couldn't get a handle on, and he knew it. <laughs> when you think about the post it being big man, pounding physical presence, and then all of a sudden around the 80s, you start to see, um, you know, the Kevin McHale's, the Jack Sigmas, the Charles Barkley's, and took a, a finesse kind of approach to it. And it kind of really birthed, you know, myself, Chris Bach, uh, even Dirk Nowinski, guys you can, Tim Duncan, you can throw in there, that uh, kind of more to, <clears throat> kind of shaped us to what we are. And what I mean by that is, you know, before you had Wilt, Shaq, strong guys being grit, then you see another style of post, and it was really transformed by, you know, the Sigmas, the Adrian Dantley's, the Kevin McHale's, using pump fakes uh, from not just verticals, but at angles, uh, using the backboard, uh, up and unders, and stuff like that to really, to where you get to, you know, my, my, my class, and we was more, uh, face up shooters. It's time the playoffs are right around the corner. It's time to really gear it up and try to get something done. I, I think that your season is all really look back on as, how, as to how far you get in the playoffs and how deep you can get in there. The 92 93 season marked a swan song of Kevin McHale's illustrious career. Battling through persistent foot injuries and the burden of the brace, McHale faced an uphill battle as his body began to betray him. The toll of his injuries was evident. As Mikhail's movements became more labored and his explosiveness waned, his lift was gone. However, even in his dis diminished state, he continued to contribute to the Celtics' success, providing crucial scoring and leadership off the bench. During the 1993 playoffs, Mikhail had one last chance to leave his mark on the game. Came on just a moment ago. Today, it was during the fourth game of the first round series against the Charlotte Hornets that he delivered a vintage McHale performance. With Larry Bird looking on in the audience, McHale drew back father time and found his footwork once again. It 
It was an unparalleled display of skill and determination. Mikhail poured in 30 points, demonstrating flashes of his former greatness. The Boston Garden crowd erupted in applause, recognizing the enduring spirit of a Celtics legend. Although the Celtics fell short in that series, McHale's final game served as a fitting tribute to his incredible career. It was a reminder of the countless memories he had provided to the fans of Boston and his unwavering commitment to the green and white. There is the strip, the hit, and the shot attempt. It's a good call by the officials. It is a continuation. Today, Kevin McHale's number 32 hangs proudly in the rafters of TD Garden alongside his teammates, Larry Bird, Dennis Johnson, Robert Parrish, Cedric Maxwell, and Reggie Lewis. It's a permanent reminder of his lasting impact on the Celtics organization. His career embodies the essence of Boston basketball. It's been a great honor over the last 13 years that we played with the DJ, I think, for what, six or seven? And uh, what a teammate. And congratulations, and now that, now that you have joined us high above courtside, say congratulations to you and your family, and what a ride it was. Thank you, Larry. You know, I was talking to Kevin, I was talking to Kevin before we came out here, and if he knew this was going to happen and be like this, he was going to come back next year and then retire again a couple more years. <laughs> I want to thank Kevin for what he's given to the Celtics. He personifies everything we dreamed about of being a Celtic player. When we were all healthy and we were getting after it, I knew every single night that we stepped on the court that we were to give it our best shot. And a lot of times those were championship years, but I was lucky enough to win three of them here. And those were absolutely the best days of my life. You know, going up there with the numbers of the people who have been retired, it means so much that I got a chance to know those people. There's very few organizations where you get, to, where you get a chance to know all the older players. I know everybody that was on the banner except for Walter Brown. When you won a championship and you saw Coos and you saw Tommy Heinsohn, they had big smiles on their face. It was a continuation of what they had done. It was all a continuation of what Red started many, many years ago. But the best times of my life were spent on this parquet floor, and I remember the first time I came out here, I looked around and I thought, man, this looks a lot better on television. But, uh, and I tell you what, you made it easy to come on this floor and play. I played hurt a lot. But I came out here, I look in the stands like I did today, and it was all worth it. Thank you very much. His career embodies the essence of Boston basketball. Resilience, unselfishness, and an unwavering dedication to the team. Kevin McHale, a true Celtics legend, will forever be remembered for his dominant low post game, his leadership, and his un unselfish approach to the game. His legacy is enduring. However, McHale's prowess is often under-discussed in today's NBA. Following his retirement from the hardwood, McHale remained connected to the game he loved. He took on various roles in the basketball world, including coaching, broadcasting, and vice president of basketball operations for the Minnesota Timberwolves, where he drafted the big ticket Kevin Garnett. McHale's basketball acumen and leadership qualities led him to coaching positions where he impacted his knowledge and passion to the next generation of players. He served as head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, Houston Rockets, and he left an impact on both teams that he guided. In addition to coaching, Mikhail also shared his insights and expertise as a basketball analyst on Turner Sports. His unique perspective and articulate commentary made him a respected voice in the media. Even after his playing career, McHale's influence extended beyond the court. He remained involved in charitable endeavors and continued to inspire others through his dedication to the game and his commitment to making a positive impact. Kevin McHale's post-playing career has solidified his legacy as not just a player, as a mentor, commentator, and undeniable NBA personality. His commitment to the sport and his enduring impact on basketball community will always be remembered. Kevin McHale, a true Celtics legend, will forever be remembered for his dominance of the low post game, his leadership, and his unselfish approach to the game of basketball. McHale's legacy continues to inspire the next generation, reminding us of his indelible mark that he left on the sport. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the remarkable NBA career of Kevin McHale. From his dominance in the low post to his unwavering commitment to the Boston Celtics, McHale's impact on the game will forever be etched in basketball history. 
And there you have it, NBA fans. We hope you enjoyed this captivating chapter in our NBA Storyteller series. Don't forget, we're powered by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash Boston to support our channel. Celtics fans, NBA fans, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the NBA History Channel on CLNS for more fascinating stories from the rich tapestries of basketball. Until next time, this is Nick Gelso. Keep the love of the game alive and tune in to the next Storyteller series. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet.